Hello everyone, this is Daniel, and I have a very serious note to make here. Um, it doesn't mean that the world's going to end, automatically end very much right now. It just means that um, Jerusalem's the capital. Yep. Jerusalem's the capital of Israel. And, you know, that that's where um, Jesus died, died on the cross, but... That also means that, um, that's when people die due to the Antichrist, spiritually. So. Uh-oh. Where are we? So, um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, um, do one recording, um, See what you think. Basically, it's um, Donald Trump saying, well, he was the one that made the peace treaty um, to make Israel um, Jerusalem the capital. I have actual um, video and sound, but I'm only going to do the sound because copyright infringement, of course. My announcement today marks the beginning of a new approach to conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. In 1995, Congress adopted the Jerusalem Embassy Act, urging the federal government to relocate the American embassy to Jerusalem yep. and to recognize that that city, and so importantly, is important. Israel's capital. Yeah. This act passed Congress by an overwhelming bipartisan majority and was reaffirmed by unanimous vote of the Senate only six mm -hmm. months ago. Yet for over 20 years, every previous American president has exercised the law's waiver, refusing to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem or to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's mm -hmm. capital city. Hmm. Presidents issued these waivers under the belief that delaying the recognition of Jerusalem would advance the cause of peace. Some say they lacked courage, but they made their best judgment based on facts as they understood them at the time. That's the Bible. Nevertheless, That's the, Bible. the record is in. After more than two decades of waivers... We are no closer to a lasting peace agreement between Israel <laughs> and the Palestinians. Oh it would be folly to assume that repeating the exact same formula would now produce a different or better result. Therefore, I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. Today, I am delivering. I've judged this course of action to be in the best interests of the United States of America and the pursuit of peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Ooh, this is a ooh, long overdue ooh. step to advance the peace process and to work towards a lasting agreement. Israel is a sovereign nation with the right, like ever. Let's see what it does here. He was always off his hand. I don't know what he's doing right there. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. So basically what that means is um they're gonna do a waiver they're not gonna do a waiver, so that means that Donald Trump is going to do um what we call an act of making Jerusalem a capital. That means that uh, Jerusalem will be a capital of Israel. Which means that the peace agreement is going to be closer, yes. 
and that means that um basically you know basically it just means that yeah you know it just means that Israel is going to have problems with God when they do that because especially America because we were involved with Israel at that time and Israel became a nation that was good that was pretty much a prophecy that's all but when Jerusalem finally became a, um, a nation, a nation's capital. Um, that means another prophecy was going to be fulfilled, but this time not good because not a good prophecy because basically um, God would not allow anyone to be uh, um, associated with that kind of prophecy because you know. That would mean that the Antichrist would be easy, it would be quite easily for the Antichrist to go to um, the capital, Jerusalem. And that would be quite easy for the Antichrist to actually, you know, slaughter something or do something that is blasphemous to the Holy Spirit. And that would mean that, um, you know, the Antichrist would be a good chance of, um, he would have a good chance of actually trying to rule in Jerusalem, and that would be pretty bad. That would be one way to lose a whole lot of people, if not have God lose, so he would pretty much prevent any of that from happening. So, first travel, you know, the major world ruling seat, which I believe it's to be Rome. Then the next time, then the next set of ruling would be to go to go to Jerusalem and then do something really bad. Then go back to um, Rome and basically say, oh, I've done amazing things. And basically he would, um, you know, try to go back to Jerusalem and then he would meet God, battle him, and then he would lose. Anytime that the the um the kings and the person that is the Antichrist goes to rule Jerusalem where Jesus was um crucified, that would mean that Jesus would have to protect that place and then call that place his kingdom, which any unclean problem happening there would be an act of um war to God. Then if he becomes a king over that area, that would be um that would be a loss, I believe. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't know exactly how it forms out, but I think it I believe it's a loss. So in that instance, you know, keep a watch. Keep a watch um for the harvest uh, for the harvest. Be vigil. Do a vigil. Because that means you have to do a lot of things for the harvest. You have to watch it grow. Watch it bud. Because right now we're on the ver we're on the verge of budding. Even I think I think we already bud budded. Just a little bit. And now we're on the verge of um opening the flower and then the fruit, the fruit grows when um, the kingdom is basically ready. So I think I think we already budded. Yeah, guys, I think we already made a flower, and then I think the fruit is now growing because we're in a place right now where you know, Jerusalem is basically the um, the dying part of the flower, and then Donald Trump doing all these things it's it's the dying part of a flower so I think the I, I think the the plant will actually um actually we're in, far, we're in harvest guys uh, so yeah we're in harvest so the <laughs> so the plant is already blighted um sorry about that 
The plant's already budded. The flower's already died. The flower has died right since people have been preaching it's the end of the world. And then, um, basically, the flower was growing and then it was beautiful when the Pope or the papacy was ridden of uh, from the true Christians. Then it was dying when the industrial um, revolution started and then basically fell off its um, fruit when people were saying f for the first time it was the end of the world because of the sin in the world. Then we have war, we have more wars. The uh, the harvest has already um, started and happened, and now we're in harvest, and, um, you know, harvest is going on. It's already ripened because of Jerusalem, and it'll be truly ripe when the Antichrist was revealed, which he has not been. People are assuming that he has not, the people are assuming he has been revealed. But he has not been. So, basically this means we are very close to the end, guys. That's why I believe we're, that's what's going on. So we're very close to the end. So, yeah. Yeah, look at, look at the um, prophecies and keep a watch. Because that's what's going to happen soon, okay? Alright, I'll be done now, okay? Bye.